Fans have come up with countless theories since the release of the final Harry Potter book in 2007 and The Deathly Hallows, Part 2 in 2011. While some of their ideas are far-fetched, a lot of theories make a surprising amount of sense, theories spark viewers' imaginations and give more depth to beloved stories. According to some fans, even the smallest detail in Harry Potter is deliberate, hinting at backstories and plotlines that weren't explicitly explored. But that give readers enough elements to fill in the blanks. These theories sound so plausible that many think that they are most likely true. Snape killed Hedwig to protect Harry. In both the Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows book and film, Hedwig dies during the Battle of the Seven Potters. In the book, Hedwig is hit by a random Avada Kedavra and instantly dies. Many people believe that the killing curse wasn't random and that Snape killed the bird so Harry wouldn't be an obvious target. Everyone knows that during the Battle of the Seven Potters, Snape was trying to help Harry and the Order of the Phoenix. He even accidentally cut George Weasley's ear while trying to hurt a Death Eater. Snape was always working in the background helping Harry. And this might be one of those, there is a theory that Crookshanks was the Potter's cat since they had a cat when Harry was a baby. No one knows what happened to the cat, but when Hermione bought Crookshanks, it acted weird and paranoid. It knew the smell of Peter Pettigrew, Scabbers, and felt that it wasn't a real rat. It was always chasing it and on the run for it and wanted to help Sirius as he also recognized that Sirius wasn't a real dog and trusted him and helped Sirius take Peter. Crookshanks were also very comfortable with Harry and curled up in his lap, and animals recognize his people they've met, even if it was a long time ago. Because of this, a lot of people think the Potters were the owners of Crookshanks, but when they died, he was put in a store. I like that theory. Ginny tricks Harry with a love potion. Ginny Weasley develops a crush on Harry when she first sees him at the train station. This crush grows over the years. Despite Harry only thinking of Ginny as Ron's little sister, but his feelings abruptly change in his sixth year. Ginny and Harry's relationship seems to come out of nowhere in the Half-Blood Prince. She and Hermione looked at love potions in Fred and George's joke shop, leading to the theory that Ginny used a love potion on Harry. Some fans believe that Ginny wanted to be with Harry so badly that she used Amortentia to get Harry to fall in low. The tale of the three brothers repeats itself. In the Deathly Hallows, Harry and his friends learn about the tale of the three brothers, a fairy tale about three brothers who try to escape death. The oldest brother, like Voldemort, boasts about the way the Elder Wand protects him, but dies because of his ego. The middle brother attempts to bring his love back from the dead with the Philosopher's Stone, but ends up taking his own life to be with her, much like Snape did for Lily. The youngest brother uses the invisibility cloak to hide from death, but eventually accepts his fate and gives the cloak to his son. Two, this draws parallels to Harry, who frequently uses his father's invisibility cloak to hide from deadly danger. This theory also suggests that Dumbledore represents death as he plays a vital role in Voldemort and Snape's demises, helps Harry at the Heavenly King's Cross, and gifts Harry the invisibility cloak. Be Ron Weasley is Albus Dumbledore. Some fans argue that Ron Weasley is a young Albus Dumbledore who travels through time. This theory is based on the fact that there's a great physical resemblance between them. Both are described as tall, with a prominent nose, red hair, and blue eyes. They both love candies and playing chess. And Dumbledore knew beforehand that Ron would eventually abandon Harry in his mission. This theory seems ludicrous, and it has inspired a lot of hate over the internet, but no one can deny that it makes some sense. It explains why Dumbledore understood Ron so well, even though he barely exchanged a couple of words with him. Furthermore, both Ron and Dumbledore have in common that they 
unlike Harry, are particularly greedy. Ron wants to be famous, and Dumbledore wanted to be recognized for his power. There is also the theory that is used frequently in fanfiction, that Harry Potter is immortal, due to the terms that the prophecy laid down. Either must die at the hand of the other. This may imply that Harry can only be killed by Voldemort, and vice versa. Once Voldemort is dead, there is nothing that can truly kill the Chosen One. Thus, Harry has achieved immortality, and can't be killed. Of course, this is introduced mostly with angst and the sorrow of outliving friends and family. Last, J.K. Rowling is a witch. There is actually a wizarding world. Whole Harry Potter series is actually true. It was the wish of whole of the wizarding world to spread Harry's story far and wide. They believed that muggles benefited as much as wizards from Dark Lord's death, hence they should also be told this epic tale. So Ministry came up with this fascinating idea of telling Harry's story to the muggles in form of a novel series.